All right, everyone, so the greenhouse is officially closed up. We're almost at Thanksgiving. I managed to get everything away and put in here and um, put away in a timely fashion. Everything went dormant. We took our cuttings. We did everything. We're basically, we're rock stars this, uh, this year. I killed it. And uh, it seems like every year it gets a bit easier. I want to talk about the final processes of closing up this greenhouse. Um, there's a few things that goes into this. One, mainly, you can see that the light is not getting in now because I've covered it with a tarp. And it's a dark tarp that's going to absorb a lot of heat. But mainly, its main function is to keep the heat inside the greenhouse. Heat rises. Um, this is a lot of thermal mass with all the soil in here, all the pots in here. Um, I also have a heater. And when we run this heater at night to keep it above 20 degrees Fahrenheit, um, all that heat isn't escaping and the heater can run more efficiently, less energy costs. Um, also the, the greenhouse really without any covering on it at all, without any insulation, really does next to nothing at night. Um, yeah, the greenhouse is warmed up during the day and it can get to really high temperatures, but that heat very quickly escapes um, it's not an effect that lasts very long and when it really matters at nighttime this greenhouse only really provides about three degrees Fahrenheit difference so if it's zero degrees outside it's three degrees in the greenhouse um, if I have this tarp on I get about 10 degrees um, it really goes significantly up and you can see down here at the bottom I'm I've tied it down to some nails that we nailed into the wood and it's on the same thing on the other side and that really keeps it down um, keeps it sturdy not from blowing away and uh, gives me great insulation i've also came in here inside the greenhouse and we taped down these windows so the windows don't get exposed we're not losing air that way um, sometimes there's little nooks and crannies in these little things you know the design isn't perfect i think it's great it goes a long way to insulate this. Um, so, you know, that's my big recommendation. If you get anything out of this video, it's insulate your greenhouse. You don't need light. We don't need darkness either. We don't need darkness for the, do the dormancy period, but we don't need light. In fact, what you've been seeing in the last couple days, I didn't have the tarp on, and there's a huge collection of water and moisture at the top of these panels. You can even see it. Um, that's not because I sprayed water. <laughs> it is because in a part that I had watered all these trees in, every one of these pots got a nice little watering. Um, that's to try to keep as much soil moisture in these pots as possible. If we don't have this covering on, what ends up happening is that the sun beats in and starts evaporating that water and it goes up to the ceiling and tries to escape. And of course it can. So, um, you know, that's another good reason is that by having this thing covered, we don't have that water evaporating naturally um, when this thing heats up. Uh, I want to keep all the soil moisture in here as possible because what I'm going to end up doing is actually getting this heater here. I'm going to bring this down and we're going to place it on the ground right about here. Excuse the camera work here, guys. But you can see the, ca the, uh, the heater, it's going to be pretty much at the entrance. This has a blast that goes sort of upwards um, into the upper parts here of the greenhouse. And whatever is in direct contact of this blast gets hit with that dry heat. And even though this is the best heater I've ever used, and I think it really does a pretty good job of not extracting too much moisture from the air, um, it still does dry out our trees. And if it dries out the wood, you're going to dry out the tree itself and the tree is going to die. And I've killed a number of trees with different heaters in the past. Specifically, the trees that were in direct blast of the heater. Whichever way that heater was blowing in, those are the trees I lost. Uh, this season, with this heater, we only lost one tree. So we did a good job of that. But I don't want to lose any more trees. I'm tired of doing that. Um, so we've got ourselves a nice little wood piece of wood here that's basically covering the trees in the direct blast of the heater. In fact, maybe I should even rise it above higher or 
maybe move the heater closer to the, the piece of wood. Uh, the only worry about is a fire. I don't exactly know how this is going to work out. Um, so we'll have to kind of play around with this and see how this piece of wood goes, but definitely something that's not flammable should be in front of your direct blast of your heater. I think that's really important. The other issue though, is that you want the heat to kind of get into the back part of the greenhouse. Um, you know, that's where the heat and the temperatures are probably going to be the lowest. So what I actually have here is a temperature gauge. This is a transmitter that transmits the temperature and humidity in here to a device I have in the house. And if it ever drops below 20, this thing goes off and it sets an alarm that then alerts me that the greenhouse is too cold. And I can come out here and adjust the heater. And I can also keep track of the temperature in here so that I can come out here knowingly ahead of time and say, all right, well, it's gonna be 10 degrees outside. What's the temperature in the greenhouse? How much insulation is this tarp giving me? Do I even need to come out here and turn on the heater, even if it's 10 degrees out? Um, in fact, last year I was so efficient with this piece of technology and the heater that I only had to run the heater for 10 nights last winter. It was a, admittedly a very mild winter, but um, for only running this thing 10 nights, that's pretty incredible. I've saved so much money in prior than in prior years. This thing here, I'm gonna put this thing probably in the, the coldest area of the greenhouse, which I imagine is probably in the back left corner. It gets the least amount of sunlight. And the, the heater is the furthest away from that point. The heat, I should say. Uh, the source of heat is the furthest away. So I'm gonna put this thing in the back part here. And then this is still gonna transmit. I think it's got like a 50 yard or 100 yard transmit radius. Um, it transmits well to uh, all parts of my house. And uh, that's where it'll be. It'll sit there and we'll keep track of the humidity. We'll keep track of the temperature. The heater will be great. Um, I guess some other thoughts before I let you guys go here, because we're, we're, that pretty much wraps it up with just keeping this thing um, in tip top shape and having the best, really the best scenario for you possible this winter time. We do have some empty space here and I wanna talk about my plans. I don't know what exactly I'm gonna do just yet, but I've never really been able to even walk inside this greenhouse, <laughs> um, let alone just put my body in here. So um, what we're gonna do, I think, is even have ourselves like maybe a table and start some seeds, uh, maybe some cuttings, and actually have this greenhouse for more than just storing figs. And um, what I normally do in, in March, early March, it depends on the weather and the temperatures around early to mid-March, I'll unveil the greenhouse here, I'll take off the tarp, let that sunlight in, and keep the heater on at nighttime to keep it above 60 in here. If I do those two things, the greenhouse really is mimicking spring and uh, even maybe even parts of summer towards the later portion of uh, like April and even like beginning of May. Um, and I can essentially get myself off to a great start to the season that way. Um, so everything in here again is just going to stay like this until about March. Then we'll unveil it and uh, that will really begin the season for me in the greenhouse. Um, it's a Harbor Freight greenhouse. For those of you guys who are interested and haven't been following our greenhouse posts, published videos that we've done, it's six by eight. It's fitting quite a few trees in here. And in fact, it's got four in-ground trees in here along with uh, all these potted trees. So it's worked out well. Uh, I'd recommend it again, but I probably would build my own if I had to do it again. And um, with, with my own design, that was much better. But thank you guys here for watching this one. Check our blog out, figboss.com. And also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we'll catch you guys for tomorrow's video. I also have some 
fig cuttings listed on FigBid. Check that link out down in the description for those of you guys who've been asking about the cuttings. They're finally available. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care, everyone.